everybody, and welcome to ESO Weekly here on the ShoddyCast channel after forever. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am Kyle, and with me as always, my dear darling brother Josh. Josh, hello everyone. Welcome back. Uh, happy New Year, a Merry Christmas, and all that good stuff happy to Hanukkah, you. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Yep, uh, everyone's, everyone's uh, at the gym working out, right, for the New Year's <laughs> resolution. Right, guys? Right? Yeah, no. For the first week or two. I'll cut back on my gaming as you're, you know, playing Skyrim right now. My New Year's resolution was more gaming. That was on the <laughs> list, I guarantee you. Lovely. Well, thanks to all of those who have returned with us. And as a little added bonus, we'd like to uh, do our very first giveaway. Yes. Free yes. stuff. Free stuff. <laughs> That's thanks. right. Christmas <laughs> isn't over. <laughs> yes, thanks to our partnership, Union for Gamers and also Plantronics, we have uh, six headsets to give away. Uh, they are they are Plantronics rig headsets. They yeah. retail for a surprising 130 American dollars. Wow. So yeah, they're not cheap. Uh, I've been using them for about a month now, and I have to say they are pretty good. Uh, kind of low high end, but they have a solid mid range and then a really tight base, which I like. Makes all the rumbling gaming noise is really cool. You just spoke a different language. What's mid range and don't worry about it. It's all that. Don't I worry don't about even it. know. So, uh, but yeah, the thing that makes them interesting though is this like little mixer thing. It's about half the size of a sweet roll in Skyrim. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like how you made it relatable yes, for the yes. audience there. That so, was a nice touch. Yeah, uh, your headphone plugs into that, and then this thing plugs into your computer. Um, it has a volume knob on it, you know, pretty basic. But what's cool about it, it has like a, a fading equalizer kind of thing on it that like fades your in-game volume and like your voice chat. Like if you're on a, a Ventrilo or something like that or a Skype conversation, you just move this little slider and it adjusts like how loud the game is versus how loud the uh, whoever you're talking with is. Oh, so good for an MMO. Good for maybe a game called The Elder Scrolls Online, maybe. Just maybe. Just maybe. Um, the other cool thing is that you can plug your phone into it as well and do the same thing with that voice fading thing. So you can really hear a conversation. You can take it without like interrupting your gameplay. That's the basic principle of this whole thing and why it's uh, cooler than most other headsets. Right, right. And but I'm... that's all I have to say about it. But yes, we have six of them to give away. And in order to enter, all you have to do is just like this video. You have to comment down below. And uh, of course, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but subscribe to the ShoddyCast channel. Yeah, hopefully we had that step covered like months ago, guys. Yeah, if you already are, don't worry about that part. But yeah, just like the video and comment and make sure you're subscribed. And uh, we will announce the winners on the next ESO Weekly. Sounds like fun. All right. Well, enough of that. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, shall we? Yes. There's a lot of ESO news to cover. Yep. This week, we are going to pretty much just be talking about PvP. Oh, more PvP news. But, you know, <laughs> some of it's good and some of it's cool to kind of speculate on. Um, but first, before we get into that stuff, I just wanted to do a quick congratulations to Zoss because they made a lot of most anticipated lists on a lot of like mm. principal prominent gaming websites. Oh yeah, I believe it. I believe it. A lot of people freaking crossing their fingers and a lot of expectations that also means. I bet it's a mixed bag for them. They're really excited that people are really looking forward to this game, but at the same time, it's a massive amount of pressure applied yeah, to them definitely. to pull through for everyone. Well, I know I just spoke to someone recently who I'm not gonna name names because they did break any by talking about it to me, but whatever. They were kind of leery about it because they had played an early, very early stage of it and they kind of were off put by it. And so they got really into the Wildstar kind of stuff and was looking forward to that. But they played a more recent build of it and they are like sold on ESO now. Yeah. They totally flipped 180. Well, so it was a work good. in progress, right? So yes. who knows what we're going to get for our final version of ESO on the release date, but let's hope it's, uh, it's kick ass. All right, so first things first, let's go into the Creating ESO article they had on Cyrodiil. Again, all this is, you know, from a few weeks ago since the Christmas break. We didn't get to it. Um, really, the only thing I wanted to bring up in this, though, was the first illustration that they had on the article, the Cyrodiil inner keep they had here. Um, the one thing that just pulled me in right away was they have these hooks built into the keeps. Yes. They have large hooks, and then they have smaller hook points, and they say it's for siege equipment. Now, this could be several different things. It could just be points that allow uh, defending players to place their stuff, like burning oil or something like that, to pour 
or just like trebuchets or something. Maybe they're just points where you can actually put those siege equipments on the keeps. Um, but the more interesting thing that I think they will eventually do with this, maybe not at launch, but post-launch, because they are still working on the Cyrodiil and the, uh, the Imperial City that might come up with this, but uh, grappling hooks. Yes. These could be anchor points for those grappling hooks for attacking players to then gain access to second levels of the keep, and then that way they're attacking not only from the front and destroying stairs and stuff, not letting people escape, but also coming in from up top. Yeah, Which I always really thought the idea of grappling hooks would be very, very cool. But at the same time, I almost think they would be too overpowered as well. Imagine an entire guild all armed with grappling hooks. At that point, walls don't even matter to them. You know what I mean? They don't have to go through that stage. The only way I can think of countering that is if uh, people up on the walls can actually destroy the grapples, right? Yes. Which but, would uh, be interesting. Um... Yeah, so like if you have to like click on them or something or do a certain amount of damage to them and then they the, whoever's climbing up the rope falls or something like that. Falls and, and breaks their it. neck. They can't use that hook again mm. or something like that. That would be definitely a cool way to go about it. Um, but yeah, we don't know. It's just it's an interesting concept. We'd like to see where they're going to go with this. Um, but yeah, hopefully they are you know, thinking about having grappling hooks. If they are, if those hooks on the walls are for grappling hooks exclusively... It's kind of poor design on behalf of whoever you would built think, the right? key. right? Yeah, let's build this nice fortification, but we'll have all these nifty little holes that the attacking people can, you know, use. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pretty <laughs> funny to think about. All right, so that was pretty much it for that article. So let's go into the Ask Us Anything on Cyrodiil. Um, let's see. There are some natural choke points in Cyrodiil that will be... Uh, helpful for those people that want more small encounters, maybe a one-on-ones, they don't want to do the huge group combat. So maybe uh, there's going to be these areas in between enemy alliance zones um, where people have to go through these narrow gates. So maybe uh, you can just wait around there stealth, wait for someone to come through, maybe on their horse, and all of a sudden you do a... You just rush them and like kill them quick or something if you're one of those dicks out there that like to do that kind of <laughs> stuff and gank people. I'm raising my hand. Yes. <laughs> but also uh, they recommended for those people who do like to do that kind of things to go around Cyrodelic towns because there's going to be people there that are more into the PvP or the P uh, PvE aspect and like to do the quests there to gain alliance points. So just wait around for those people and gank them when they're trying to do quests. Or uh, hang around the endpoints of transit lines. So you know people are going to want to be going there because they want to get to the battlefront, but they may not be with groups, so they might be by themselves, and then you can gank them there as well. I wonder how rewarding that would be for like a small group of players, exactly how much, how many like alliance points you get from just strictly killing players and I'm stuff. I'm sure you'll get less points, but I mean, if that's what you like to do, then you're going to do that. Yeah, I just imagine somebody in a, like a smaller guild or something like playing Bandit, you know, and hanging out by the bridge or by the... Uh, gates, you know, any choke points that, you know, people have to wander through. Give me your, empty your pockets and give me your gold sort of deal. <laughs> so uh, something else I didn't realize uh, was that keeps over time will keep getting stronger based on if they have, you know, the three resources around them, the lumber mill, farm, that stuff. And they'll actually show some of these signs that they are getting stronger. So you may find that like uh, the towers just look beefier than they were. Or something like that. That's kind of some of the things that they were saying um, Alliance may show. But most of the improvements you'll see are more just uh, uh, passive stuff. Like the walls just have more hit points or the doors have more hit points. Stuff like that. Okay, not like visual. Like for a second I was picturing Some are there. visual, yes. Okay. But most of it will just be stronger walls, stronger doors. It'd be cool. Like you show up at one keep. It was obviously just taken like a second ago mm -hmm. and hasn't had any time to build up its resources. And its walls are made of like cardboard. And then you go to the keep where like a well, very, very well established guild has been uh, has been defending for a very long time. And they've got like freaking titanium walls. Yeah, you just, would think like, it very should show. Reinforced. Yeah, it make it would make sense. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. All right, uh, siege equipment. Um, someone was asking, like, well, where can you put this stuff? Can you put it freaking anywhere you want? Um, well, there's going to be a little circle indicator. If it's red, that means you can't place it. I think if it's gold, that means you can place it. And you just have to have a large enough flat surface, and you can't be too close to another piece of siege equipment. Uh, but, yeah, you can pretty much put it anywhere. There, there's a flat surface. So I can't climb up into a tree and place my trebuchet. No, on. I don't think you could do that. Well, that's probably Unless good. it's bugged. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see, there will be uh, plenty of indicators. There might even be too many indicators. Um, some of these will be worldwide, like uh, if there's a new emperor that was crowned, that will be displayed worldwide, not just in Cyrodiil. Um, uh, but most of them, like I said, are just going to be in the zones themselves. So like if one of your scrolls are taken, uh, that'll be displayed. And that'll just give you the indication, oh, I should check my map and see where this is. If I'm close enough, maybe I should help take it back. So pretty obvious stuff, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, Zoss can actually prevent people from switching characters to another alliance within the same campaign, which stops spies. So if you have a character, if you have multiple characters all on different... Uh, alliances, you won't be able to enter that same campaign um, on that same account. Yeah, that's good. I mean, what's fun about spying when it's totally cheating and you're just cheating the system and on a different alliance? If you want to spy, then go behind enemy lines and like stealth around. Everyone has the ability to stealth. Yeah, don't be that, a puss. Yeah, scouting, like legit scouting sounds like so much more fun. It does, yeah. Alrighty, uh, there's going to be 50 PvP ranks in all, apparently 25 titles and grades, so I said there's going to be like a veteran grade 1 or something like that, I'm not sure what they mean by that. Uh, but higher ranked people will have more, or they will give people more alliance points when they're killed, so if I kill a person of a higher rank, they'll give more alliance points than someone of my equal rank. Okay, yes, I actually like this a ton, and it's something that World of Warcraft actually started with in their PvP, they had a ranking system where you'd be a veteran, I can't even remember all the names of the ranking system. But yes, the higher rank you would kill, the greater the reward in points. Which makes sense, you know, you kill a veteran, a guy that's been doing this for a long time. It's like the equivalent of killing a general or something in the yeah. real world, you know? it's It just should count for more than killing a peon or whatever. All right, uh, costumes, I'm sorry to say, there's not going to be like costumes that make you look like you're of a different alliance so you can fool people into thinking that you're with them and then all of a sudden stab them in the back. There's not going to be costumes like that. You can use costumes in there, but they'll just, you know, change the appearance of your armor and stuff. So you won't like change race all of a sudden, but oh well. Losing a resource will not only lose up or you won't lose the upgrades you have to your keep immediately. So if you have a keep, you're defending it, but you start to lose resources around it, you won't just lose all those upgrades you had immediately. It slowly ticks down. That makes sense, too. So that's good. Um, each siege equipment can be aimed at anything except the ram, because the ram can only apparently hit doors, which kind of makes sense. I mean, what are you going to do, hit people with a ram or something like You'd that? think you'd have enough time to get out of the way of a <laughs> ram before it hits you, but... Yeah, but they all have like varying degrees of uh, effectiveness, uh, effectiveness depending on what you're attacking. So like uh, you may find trebuchets do more damage versus walls and stuff than they would people. Um, but like the opposite would be true for I the the ballista. Uh, ballista. Yeah, yes, I imagine a ballista is designed to take out like people right. on the walls and stuff. Yeah. Um, there is a raid interface, you know, raid frames. So if you're used to like having large group. Uh, large groups, you, you like playing with large groups, uh, there will be raid frames like that, up to 24 players. And it's really simple to create one, you just add more than four people to your party and it automatically switches to a bigger raid frame. Can you briefly describe a raid frame to me for people who haven't played MMOs? Okay, well you have like a party frame which just shows the, the three other people in your group, right? It has their name and their health bar there. Right. And then you have a large group version of that which we call, we usually call raid frames and other games um which is just a larger version of that so you see 23 other players and yourself right. it's to there. keep you know what it's especially useful for too are the healers like yes. i feel like raid frames were specially designed for those guys just to know where everyone's at in, in their group health wise and stuff like that and to keep mm -hmm. track of everyone but that also warrants a whole other discussion and really an argument when it comes to how the healing system works in this yes, game. Yes, I wasn't going to mention yeah, it. Because yeah, because you can't, you know, specifically target a certain person. You have this uh, quote-unquote uh, smart healing system they used where the system itself picks out who deserves the heals the most because most of your heals are like either a full AoE heal or a conal heal or it only heals up to a certain amount of people. So it chooses who it wants to heal instead yeah. of you. So yeah, there's a big debate on that currently, I because, know. Because, and I, I can totally understand why there's a big debate on that. It has the potential for being devastating. I'm just trying to picture like past MMOs 
uh, particularly PvE situations, not so much PvP, mm -hmm. but in like PvP PvE situations where you know your heals as a healer are way more concentrated on the tank of the group. You know that's the person you want to keep alive. Not being able to target that person makes things very, very interesting and different, and what it's potentially gonna, terrible. What it's going to do is it's going to put more pressure on the healer to stand where they need to be standing, because especially in large group content, when you're with you know 24 players and you need to be healing people that are really hurting right now, that means you need to get your butt to where they are, because you don't have these long distance heals anymore. You yeah. have these very concentrated AOE heals, so you have to be next to the people that need the heals. So you're going to be finding healers with a lot of movement abilities in their skill bar to get where they need to be. Because, yeah, I don't think there's yeah. any... I can't think of any like channeling ability, at least not from what we've read on any of the articles or anything, about any sort of channeled ability where you have to like stay still to activate it. There there are some, yes. Th there are a couple. Even there's an ultimate that the Templar has. Okay, so they're usually a lot more powerful abilities, not your average like heal or something like that. The channeling ones, yes. The channeling Especially ones, the ultimate one is, is a really powerful heal. But yeah, okay. you do have to stand still. Well, then that's it. retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, if anything, that just means, like, it actually puts more responsibility on the players to make sure that they're not just sitting there absorbing damage. If they need heals, they need to get to the healer. Yeah. So you're going to find that, like, parties have much more ta different tactics than they did in different games. We'll see how games. it goes. Yeah. I think it'll, it'll work out all right. It's definitely going to be different, though. All right, so moving on. Uh, capturing all resources around the keep will actually break the transit line to that keep. So not only so you don't even have to attack the keep itself in order to break that, you know, that you can't like instantly travel to that keep. That's what I mean by transit lines to that keep. Yes. So no one can then use the way shrine in that keep anymore once you've taken all three of the resources around it. So you don't even have to attack that keep itself yet. So that's a good tactic for those who like if you're a small group and you're waiting on a larger group to come to you, just go ahead and take out those resources in first while you're waiting on them, so that way the people inside the keep can't get any resources unless they get there by foot. So that's a good tactic there. Uh, current siege equipment... Uh, I guess we already know this. There's the rams, the the forward keeps, which people haven't really been talking about. Uh, the ballista, trebuchets, catapult, and also flaming oil, another one that people haven't really been talking about. So flaming oil, kind of just what it sounds like. You pour flaming oil onto people, there's even like grates, I think, on keeps that you can pour oil yeah, through. Yeah, purely defensive yes. siege equipment. Um, but yes, the forward camps are just these camps that you can put in enemy territory that kind of act like ray shrines, um, where if you people die, I think you can res there. I don't know if people can fast travel there if you're alive, but I'm pretty sure if you're dead, you can res there. So that's it's definitely good if you're attacking a keep to put one of those nearby. Absolutely, it's the equivalent of a Sunderer in Planet Side too. All right, and then there is something we haven't really got a lot of information on. It's called the Alliance War Interface, and it shows a bunch of different things. It shows, like, all the available campaigns you have to you, um, but not only does it show you your home campaign, which is obviously, you know, the one that you would, that's your go-to campaign. It also will show your guest campaign you currently have, because you do have one of those. So if there's a large queue for some reason for your home campaign, you can just jump on into your guest campaign. But then also the other thing that this uh, interface notes is all of your friends' campaigns and the ones that they're in. So if you have a lot of friends on your list, you can join their campaign anytime you want. Um, the only uh, difference is I don't think you get uh, buffs through their campaigns. So you'd be missing out on that. But that's pretty much it. And uh, also through that interface, that allows you to change your home campaign. But again, I think that'll cost alliance points to do. But just to keep that in mind. And that was pretty much it for the news of that article. But then we have a Game Reactor interview with uh, Paul Sage. I guess this happened about no, three weeks ago. not Paul Sage. The Sage. <laughs> oh, he's the Sage? So we yes. have the conk and the Sage. Exactly. Okay, got you. Uh, back on ranks, how we said there was 50 of them. Well, there's also rank symbols for each of those. And they have that instead of the long-ass title on your nameplate. Which, again, nameplate is just the name that is above your head, which you can... Uh, disable if you don't want it, but in PvP I would almost want that just because it makes players more visible and so it has a more tactical advantage to do that.
But again, there won't have like this huge grand champion master slayer huge ass title next to your name. Instead, it'll just be a little rank symbol um, by your name. It yeah, just says your rank. The equivalent of like uh, Battlefield or Call of Duty. You know, they all have sergeant has a specific looking little rank symbol as well. You know, just think about the army ranking system. That's exactly what I'm picturing in my head anyway. Right. Um, they were asking how big Cyrodiil was. Again, this is a question that's come up a lot of times, and they kind of give rough, rough estimates as how long it is. They say that on foot, um, basically if nothing was in your way, if no people attacked you, if you didn't have to walk around a yeah, town. Yeah, because that's realistic. Yeah, it would take roughly 30 minutes on foot to run it. I'm assuming that doesn't mean sprinting. So that's a pretty long time. That and is a, a pretty big I'm, zone. I'm trying to picture it in my head. 30 minutes of just nonstop character running. Yeah, That'd that's be a that's boring ass long. 30 minutes. But yeah, that is I don't know how long, long is how long does it take to run across Skyrim? I wouldn't know. But it's got to be a long time. I've watched a, a Shank playthrough on a Quest Gaming Network and <laughs> it's like 2 hours of just oh, getting from one town to another. Travel. Yeah, cuz he hates fast traveling. He doesn't do it. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's that 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 piece right there was for Shank. Right. That's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just him. He's like, ooh. All right. And then the uh, the final information in here, and this is probably the most interesting thing to me, is uh, we know that guilds can claim keeps, right? And then they can then have their guild store there for people to rummage through and buy things. Yes. This we know. What because we, we uncovered it <laughs> with the Conk interview. Yes. Um. What we didn't know was that also guilds can claim a farm, a mine, or a lumber mill as well and do the same thing. Because each of these will have a quartermaster that oh, really? you can have your guild store on. People can come in. So and there you peruse. go. That's the smaller guilds. That's what they're getting. Yes. Smaller guilds are way more likely to hold like a small resource point right. where the bigger guilds are going to be the ones holding the big strategic keeps. Yep. And they say really... All you have to do is talk to the quartermaster there after you've taken it, but I, there's got to be something else to it. Like you have to pay alliance points or something like that. You can't just, oh, first person that, you know, takes this keep and then talks to the quartermaster gets it. And then I'm assuming you're only limited to one per guild. Like. Yes, just one per guild. Yeah. And uh, that was it for the news. So a lot of PvP stuff there. I'm really hoping they start getting into the PvE stuff. I have it on good authority that they will be releasing that fairly soon, but I don't know how yeah, soon. Yeah, we need uh, more on adventure zones, of course, and exploration and questing. I think we actually have a poll going we on do. right now. Yes. And uh, I think PvP is definitely losing with what we need more. <laughs> yeah. And the question is, what, what what do we need more information about or like, something? Yeah, I, I asked, like, uh, pick two of the subjects you would want the information on most of Elder Scrolls. So I had like uh, questing and exploration, end game content, <clears throat> uh, large group content like adventure zones and other stuff. Yeah. And, and I questing... think questing and exploration and actually crafting in professions was the second one so okay, far. Okay, yeah. And see, that makes sense because I mean, what have we really got for the exploration? We got one video one time that was really cool. It was showing them interacting in the world, opening chests and picking locks and stuff. And it was a cool little exploration video, one that was very popular, but that's all we've got for that mm -hmm. so far. Yeah, so definitely more information on that. Hopefully it will be soon. <laughs> it's like at this point, I'm like, okay, I get it, Zenimax. I'm looking forward to the PvP. And I, I'm a person that personally loves PvP. I think we were like that about three months ago. Yeah, I mean, that was, that's going to be my end game right there is PvP. But even I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's take a break here and, and cover mm. the other stuff as well. Yep, yep. So uh, let's go into the developer question of the week. This one is from Jim Gardner. Hi, my name is Jim Garner. I'm an associate producer here with The Elder Scrolls Online, and I have your question of the week. You're given the opportunity to be a Daedric Prince for a day. You have great power and no morals. What would you do? <laughs> so great power, no morals. I'm a Daedric Prince for a day. Now is this a Daedric Prince? In real life, because that's how I'm going to answer this yes. question, I think. I would assume. Real life is way more fun to be an Aegic Prince, because in the Elder Scrolls universe, they expect crazy crap like that to mm -hmm. happen to them. But to an unsuspecting world, what would I do for a day as a Daedric Prince? I don't know. 
I need time to think about it. You go. Okay. Well, actually, I did think about this while in the shower, surprisingly. Because um, <laughs> that's what we do in the shower. <laughs> think <laughs> about the developer of the week. question yeah. of the week. <laughs> um, I was at, it might be kind of boring. I don't know. But I was thinking I would change all the real food in the world to Skyrim food. So it would be nothing but like boiled cream, sweet rolls, <laughs> ch- goat cheese, uh, yeah. mammoth cheese. I like that. So I <laughs> so I open up my refrigerator and I take re- my little st- string. Porker loaves. <laughs> yeah, I reach for my string cheese and it's mammoth cheese this is now. gross. Like the, and not just the mammoth cheese in string cheese form, but actually full like wheels, mammoth cheese, like wheels. Or like stuff. still in the, the sacks like you find yeah. in the, the giant camps. Oh my Ooh. goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That actually wouldn't be too bad though. Cause that food always looks very appetizing and I've always liked way better cream. than the crap I probably have in my freezer, which is just frozen TV dinner. So <laughs> I'm on board with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, wow. Yeah. That was very... Like, that wasn't too bad. Like, that... I mean, everyone would be very, very confused for a day, but... They would definitely be freaking out. Everyone would be freaking out, for sure, but uh, nobody would die, probably. No one would die. Um, I don't know. If there's a lot of giant toes, maybe. Okay, okay. I'll think I'll think along this, along the lines, because I, 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 I'd want to pull some real, like, Shayagora shenanigans like that. Right. that. That'd be a Lord Shayagora thing to do. I think I would change the weather. I would change the weather and have it rain like cheese wheels. Or oh God! You like would that. kill people. I, that one is one where see Shagor is two sided. Yours was you... more <laughs> playful, you know, more more playful. And then I'm I'm going for the Shagor side that's a little more dementia, you know, evil. Sort you would of thing. like literally destroy the world. Like every car would just crash. Planes <laughs> would fall out of the sky because of cheese wheels. Cheese wheels in the engine intakes and stuff. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Man, you but just then, killed like three okay, billion okay. people. I'd kill all those people, sure. But then after that, like. Before the stroke of midnight, I'd snap my fingers and anyone who died would come back to life. And then there all the go. cheese would still be there? The cheese would still, they'd have to clean it up for a freaking months afterwards. At least famine would be gone for a while. Because you have cheese to eat. There you go. I just solved world <laughs> hunger for you. I only solved it for like a day before the cheese gets all terrible. But Wow. That, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, uh, for time constraints, I am going to avoid... Shadian's questions. You're Sorry. actively avoiding them. Yes. Wow. You just shut off our audience. Well, you just feel free to keep sending them in. I mean, I'm still gonna go look through <laughs> them and stuff and choose them for next week. But yeah, uh, we're skipping it. Yeah. Well, we just had a lot of news, you know. So we'll just uh, we'll maybe make the segment longer next week then if we don't have as yeah. much. There's news. not even so much news. It's just a crap ton of donations. Because we have a lot of, you know, thoughtful fans, and we've also been gone three weeks, so we have a lot of dinner. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, cool. So let's get into our sponsors of the week. Starting up with, okay, Bjark J. Holsengard. Yeah. Uh, Johan <laughs> Munzing, thank you all. Uh, Thomas Koch returns. And he is very close to Dragonborn very status. Very close to Dragonborn status. So he's more of a gray beard. <laughs> and a uh, new donation here from Adam Wright. Adam, you are no longer mortal. No, sir. You have been called by the Greybeards to High Hrothgar. Henceforth, you will be known as Dovahkiin. Dragonborn! All right. I felt like that was a long one, but that kind was of, kind of a long, kind one. of epic though. <laughs> if I, I gave myself chills, and I'm still convinced I'm not pronouncing this name right. But Justin Sudacom returns. Jitty 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 Dragonborn. Jitty jitty. Uh, and oh boy, you're gonna have fun with these two. Uh, Robert Joshi or Joshi? Robert Joshi. Robert, you too <laughs> have been summoned to a high Hrothgar, and. For the first time in history, I guess, there's two Dragonborns at the same time, which makes no sense from a lore perspective, but whatever. Dragonborn for you, sir. And then we have a donation here from uh, David Harden. Ah, David! You also, I don't know what's up with the Greybeards. They're smoking something up there in High Hrothgar. But they also call you up, and you are Dragonborn. Man. Three new dragonborns this week. Oh man, my throat is sore. I can't do that graybeard voice for very long. Alrighty, new donor here, Tyler Skylab. He says, "Greetings, Shardycast and fellow Test fans. I personally cannot wait for ESO to come out in April, 
and revolutionize the way we view MMORPGs of the future. I cannot say death to the queen because I am considering becoming a high elf myself, however the Dark Elves House of Drez and Rudderan have my favor at the moment and I will likely fight for the pact in the honor of my Dunmer ancestors. I hope to see you in game and fight alongside you or against you in Cyrodiil. For the elves, whatever side they are on. Very unsure, like, hello friend, but my enemy. I look forward to fighting alongside you or gutting you. Yeah, that's pretty much a two face nice. there. <laughs> uh, Perry Roberts returns. He says, I still cannot think of a good motto for Daggerfall Covenant. It is killing me, lol. Uh, keep up the good work, Josh oh, yeah. and Kyle. I totally forgot about that. We had the voting, right, for yes. the new Daggerfall Covenant uh, slogan. So, what was it? What, for what King it? and Covenant. For King and Covenant. Wait, yeah, it should be that voice, yes. right? For King and Covenant. For King and Covenant. Yes. Lovely. I okay. like that. That's good. <laughs> All right. The, the Shadians have spoken. It is written in stone and cannot be changed. So there you okay. go. Okay. Henry Perry says, Happy holidays. A little late, but you know. Uh, for our hosts, Kyle, Josh, and their shoddy staff, and the Shadians, all I want for Christmas is to be in the Shoddy Cast Guild. Oh, that's adorable. For the qu qu queen! Dex, <laughs> even they know that I have to do the editing. Yeah, yeah, I put, put a stutter there. That was like a stutter, <laughs> stutter for the he queen. He with a stutter. Lovely. Okay, uh, Paris Kissinger returns. Says, uh, this is a message from Drogvokan, or Vokun, I guess. Uh, I shout out to the Battleborn Sentinels at the Battleborn Sentinels.engine.com. It's a 30-plus active, multi-focused guild that will give a place to any who serve the pact faithfully. Join our members for the beta and launch. Blood and honor, Battleborn. <laughs> Blood and honor. Nicholas Smith also returns. He says the Lunar Alliance is a role-playing guild of virtuous werewolves who strive for honor, blood, brotherhood, and self-control. Something. Uh, we deny our beastly bloodlust and use our powers to devour evil wherever we find it. Oh, nice werewolves. They're like the companions. <laughs> our guild is now looking to expand both consoles, or to both consoles and PC. The Lunar Alliance will now be made of up to three sub-guilds. They have uh, TLA East, that's for PC and I guess it'll be Evan Hart Pact. TLA West, that's for Xbox One and Daggerfall Covenant. TLA South, that's for PS4 and Old Mary Dominion. Uh, for more information, you can visit them at the engine site, thelunaralliance.engine.com. And they say, keep up the stupendous work for insert alliance chant of choice here. <laughs> uh, oh, we haven't had a Queen, blood. King Covenant, and uh, for the pact. <laughs> blood for the pact. Do new donation here for Evan Farina. Uh, I know this guy's an Evan uh, is a good fan of ours because he's on Facebook like every day. He says, <laughs> The Ruby Brotherhood is an Ebon Heart Pact guild formed by two friends who have studied the lore behind the epic saga of games known as the Elder Scrolls for nearly three years. In their guild, you will find... You will experience epic and dramatic role-playing 24-7 that is true to the lore behind Elder Scrolls while leveling up to in quests and dungeons, fighting in epic random events, and even Cyrodiil PvP. Find out a whole lot more at the Ruby Brotherhood or brotherband.engine.com. <laughs> That's a good thing to specify, by the way, that you're an RP guild, but that also respects the lore, because I've participated in RP uh, in World of Warcraft before, and everyone was like Arthas' second cousin in that game. They were all yeah. related to, like, these uh, very predominant characters in the universe. Seems so. unlikely. Yeah, pretty unlikely. A uh, new donor here, Sebastian, and oh my god, he's got one of those dot dots over a vowel. Uh, Ludeki, Ludak, L Ludak, something like that. Thank you, sir. He says the Knights of Dawn, or KOD, is a council run, family oriented PC guild of the Ebonheart Pact, which makes decisions based on majority rule to prevent an imbalance of power. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because you guys in the pact aren't familiar with an imbalance of power with right. your tribunal and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we focus on individual <laughs> for the queen. <laughs> we focus on individual development, and that always or allows for all types of play to be recognized and encouraged. The KOD has a unique, well-rounded ranking system tailored towards PvP, PVE, as well as RP, and to organize our forces. 
This organization helps to streamline our mission and increase efficiency. I kind of like pushed my glasses up. <laughs> uh, currently, the KOD is looking for all types of players and is accepting applications. Uh, see more at kod3.getlaunch.com. Ain't you, Kyle? I can't wait to use you as a fur coat. That's mean. That is pretty mean. For You know what? It's one thing Just to, to let you know, you're not even going to see my Khajiit, because that's going to be my private character. And what? Yeah. So, take that. <laughs> but yeah, that'd be a pretty funny looking fur coat. Khajiit coat. It would be kind of weird looking. It'd probably be itchy. Uh, Martin Hirschner returns. Hirschner! Dragonborn! <laughs> uh, TamrielTradingCompany.com It's a DC guild focused on RP and trade. Join their alliance of guilds to gain protection from the would-be bandits that crawl the hills of Cyrodiil as you seek to proclaim the riches found within. I think I wrote that. Just You saying. wrote that? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, because I, visit, I visited this website and it's actually pretty cool. They got a lot of lore stuff there for the guild and what they're planning on doing. So they're going to be focused like on trade, but in Cyrodiil. So they're going to have a PvP aspect to it as well. It's going to be pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Carlos Flores returns, and he says, We are the Ebonheart Legion. We're a collaboration of PS4 guilds fighting for the Ebonheart Pact and looking to become a dominating force in ESO. For everyone that wishes to join their cause, you can sign up at ebonheart-legion.engine.com. Uh, they say, We look forward to seeing you on the battlefield. Yeah. Allison Delaney, new donor here, says, Hey guys, keep up the glorious work. For the queen! Lovely. Uh, new donor here as well, Taylor Truitt, says, Hey guys, keep... Wow. Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for keeping me entertained every week. I look forward to it every day. I've been watching you since 10k followers, and I hope I can be in one of your guilds. Because you guys, because of you guys, everybody at work comes to me when they talk about ESO. Because dot dot dot. Because why? Oh my god! You didn't miss your sentence. Cliffhanger. <laughs> and guess who returned? Who? Sterling Jennings. What? Sterling Jennings, dude. I thought he was gone. Oh my <laughs> gosh, he's back, Sterling. Malakath. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> He says, sorry I've been gone so long, guys. I still listen to every week's cast and lore series, but the holidays were painful on the wallet. I hope this helps you guys keep going, and I can't wait to fight beside you in ESO. Absolutely. Thank you, Sterling. One of our top contributors right there, for sure. Yes. And uh, closing in on the next ranking, by the way, as far as, uh, you know, transcending into the next realm of godhood and all. God, I don't know what he's going to be next. Oh, I think I know. I think I know. <laughs> hey, I know you. Hell, see this. Uh, German Hashion. Uh, new donor here. He says the Brotherhood is primarily a PvP guild. But with the particip but will be participating in end game PVE. I'm starting to not be able to read anymore. Uh, limited entry, smaller guild with elite play style. Hmm, damn elitists. Uh, but good attitudes. Okay, so they're not elitists. <laughs> looking to fill our ranks. We will be using the five guild limit to our advantage and looking for larger guilds to be allied with. Uh, we have vent and guild page eosobrotherhood.guildlaunch.com. Come check us out, and or, uh, we look forward to slitting throats and burning ours uh, the coming year. <laughs> See you in the game. <laughs> and the final donation here is from Crazer, uh, and he says, Depraved. Uh, I guess this is the definition. It's an adjective. It means morally bad, wicked, corrupt, looking for marauders, highwaymen. Oh, wait, I think they're looking for marauders, highwaymen, shock troopers, and all varieties of PvP players to make depraved known and feared throughout Cyrodiil. These are the gankers, and this is probably these yeah, are the people I... that like that news that we were talking exactly. about. Exactly. I'm already seeing it, man. Yeah. Depraved is an 18-plus guild on the PC slash Mac server. Apply today. Playerkiller.engine.com. They are definitely going to be just a guild of gankers. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. What, what faction are they on? Uh, Doesn't say. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully I'll marry Dominion. I'll join them just so I'm not like being <laughs> the one ganked. Right? <laughs> You can't kill me, I'm on your team. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it for the sponsors of the week. I wanted to announce that we do have a kind of competition thing going on with our lore videos. 
The Elder Scrolls lore series and the Fallout lore series are duking it out uh, donation-wise. Yes. So if you do go to our donation uh, page on our site, shotacast.com, um, you will see that there are meters there. So yeah, they're kind of duking it out. Elder Scrolls is like whipping ass on Fallout, but maybe you guys can change that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we say that in the ESO Weekly <laughs> right. episode. Like you, like, you guys are going to go and donate to Fallout rather than Elder Scrolls. Hey, you don't know. But anyways, whoever reaches the, <laughs> the what is it, $1,000? Uh, yes, $1,000 is the, yeah, goal the goal. On that. Whoever reaches that first gets a bonus lore episode. Yes, a little incentive for donating. You know, we've always just accepted donations gladly, and uh, those donations go directly to benefiting the shoddy cast, buying new equipment and voice actors and all that good stuff. But, uh... We thought, why not throw like a little incentive in there as well and give you guys more content for reaching those goals. So, uh, and if, yes. If you want to see who is getting this money that you're donating to us, just go to our staff page that we have on there now and you'll see all the people that we are uh, actively paying so that they give us awesome content that we can then give to you. Yeah, we'll have more details on that in a uh, future video. Yep. But uh, more on that later. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think you have reached the end of this episode of ESO Weekly, the first episode of 2014. Yay. Counting down the days to the release of The Elder Scrolls Online. Less than three months away! We so excited, we so excited, we so excited. Are we excited? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, don't forget to like this video and share it with who everyone you know. I have been Josh. And I've been Kyle. We'll catch you later. Whoa.